Dr. Cecily O'Neill is a leading figure in process drama, a type of drama that tries to liberate teachers from rigid structures and focuses instead on creativity and fluidity. Today, Cecily is visiting the Unicorn Theatre in South London. Here, she will be taking a workshop with Year 4 children, a workshop with local drama teachers, and overseeing a Year 4 drama class run by teacher Sarah Nunn. So it was a story... One of Process Drama's main aims is to get teachers to use pupils' ideas. This is a concept Cecily concentrates on in one of her workshops. Weren't you? That's what you were looking for. Three, four, five. Really spread out. I've been told this is a very scary forest, but just looks looks okay to me. I mean, the sun is shining now. She's created a story with the class, where she is a wizard who sends them on a dangerous quest to recover her missing children. I would advise any teacher who isn't terribly confident about working in a role to choose a role that isn't too far from her own teacher persona. It's wise not to be the absolute ultimate authority, because that is almost gives you too much power and it's a little hard to relinquish it. Unless you know the magic word, you cannot enter. Magic wizard, come on, I'll kill you to die. It may be a mistake, particularly if you happen to be a very good actor, to actually get into character because you're in the make-believe in a way that the children are not really able to join you at that level. Cecily has chosen the role of a wizard, but she is not all-powerful. She is a wizard that needs the children's help. Can you do something that I can't do? Yes. Can you, could you go and find my son and my daughter and bring them back here to me? Think of a word to describe that feeling and go! Sarah's running a workshop based on the book Voices in the Park that she's been reading with her class. She's invited Cecily to observe her. What hidden word is suspicious. suspicious? Look at that, it's fantastic. Suspicious. Sarah has chosen the role of the park keeper. Some teachers find getting in and out of role clearly and convincingly a difficult task. Right. I'm very glad that you can make this meeting today. As chief park keeper of Southwark Park, I am very pleased that you have taken time out of your very busy schedules to come and join me in this important meeting. Everybody will find a different way of working in role. Some people find it useful to adopt a piece of costume, a scarf or a hat to differentiate when they're in role from when they're not in role. Sarah, for example, put a coat on and that established her authority as being in charge of the park. It can just mark off for the children the moment that you're not their teacher, you're now in role. And then when you feel the need to be the teacher again, you can take off your hat or scarf or whatever it is uh, and re-establish your regular relationship with them. Who is a tree here? Can you raise your hand if you're representing the trees? Sarah asks her pupils to take on the role of the trees, the grass, or the lampposts in the park. Can you tell me why it's very important that young children don't climb you? Because when you, when someone climbs up a tree on you, it's just like an ordinary um, person like climbing on you and trying to stamp on you and trod on you, and it hurts. It does hurt, does it? What happens to your bark? Um, if some, if some of the tiny bits fall off and I lose my skin. You lose your skin. That's not nice, and it's coming to winter, isn't it? And you need to be protected and keep warm, don't you? It's cold. It is, it's getting cold. More importantly almost than the role the teacher chooses, the role that you give the kids is, I think, very important. A role that has to ask questions is a very useful one, or a role that has to answer questions, provided they've got the information with which to answer. Um, adults always. I did ask a child once, why, uh, um, why do you think I usually ask you to be adults? And he said, because 
Uh, we know how to be children. We need to learn how to be adults. In the third workshop, Cecily is helping the teachers understand appropriate roles to give children. To demonstrate, she has given them an exercise, asking them to get into role as pets and their adult owners. This is Badger. Badger? But my cat, Badger. She was the runt of the litter, and um, she's pulled through, and, and, and she's here now. Oh. We're very pleased. Is she still rather needy? She is, yes. Oh, yeah, I carry her around on the front of me like a baby. I think uh, if the children are in adult roles, then more can be expected of them, and behaviour is easier to monitor. Mud, 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 <laughs> and more mud. Bring on the mud. I want to be stronger. We need to tell you that it's not my fault. Runts are weak. You need to help me. I want to carry on being the baby on your front. It's using animals is something that all children can relate to. Like everyone knows what an animal is. So by starting off with, think about what it is to be an animal, to be a pet, to, and then use, and then expanding that out into, but what if it was, you know, I don't know, something mystical like a fairy or, or mm, yeah. something from a, a fictional story. Exactly, so you could use it as a jumping off point. One of the things I like about using or beginning with a, a, a pet is that it puts kids for example, especially little kids, in a caring relationship with each other. And even if it's their best friend or something. Uh, so, you know, if in a classroom with time, I'd say, well, you know, look after your pet. Where does it live? What do you feed it on? I need a little bit of research. So one of the important factors to remember when giving children roles is the power relationship between those roles. Think of one message they would want to get across to human beings in general? Could you think of like one strong uh, message or slogan? I'd just like to tell my owner and all the other humans out there that, ma that dogs are man's best friend and I'd just like a bit more meat on my bone. Back in the wizard's castle, Cecily is still in role. She's negotiating with the adventurers. Will they go on her quest? What do you think? If you want us to get your kid, how are we going to go there without no magic? You don't know us. I will give you each one piece of magic to help you, but you must only use it at the most dangerous part of the journey. So the children's suggestion that they need magic to complete their quest is incorporated by Cecily into the workshop. I think if teachers can be brave enough to let go a, a little bit of the structure that dominates their lives, I think they discover what fun it is um, to learn in a more playful way. I'm going to give each group to help you on your journey as I promised. Yes! One magic stone. Here is your magic stone. Guard it carefully. I used to think fun was a bad word in relationship to drama, but after all, drama is pretending. It's essentially playful. That doesn't mean to say that it can't be tragic and moving and all of those things, but it's a pretend world. It's a safe world. What's the worst thing that can happen if you just decide to put uh, a tightly planned lesson on one side and go where the kids might want to go. Could we see them just coming back to life? If you use your magic stone? I think it's very important to ask children to observe each other's work. We need to look at each other's work and uh, we need to see what's there. The rest of the class watch as two adventurers finally find the wizard's lost children. You just see what happens when you go and talk to these sad children. If you want to escape from this horrible place, please come with us to your father in the Enchanted Woods. You're lying. You're, you just got... You're just going to take us to a haunted place. I'm not. If both. we're lying here, you know your dad's writing. There isn't, in drama in the classroom, there isn't a formal exterior audience, external audience. But, of course, we're all really audience to our own work. But if you don't allow moments for that observation to happen, 
then you're losing a really key part of what drama's all about. <gasps> is that a letter from your father? Yes, it is. <gasps> I mean, if, you're, if you still think um, that we're lying, here's a recorded voice of your father. Hello, I am your father. Please come home. I miss you. They led them back. The adventurers finally managed to convince the children to return home to their father, the wizard. You will be a fine witch, you will be a fine wizard, but you must never go into the outside world ever again. I think that teachers somehow forget that in their efforts to help the kids to be creative, that the biggest help will be if they're creative themselves, and not to worry about that. Most teachers are very creative people, but the children in the classroom probably only see a, a, a glimpse of that creativity. It's dangerous there. As a reward for returning his lost children, the wizard gives each adventurer a magic lamp containing one wish. I wish that I had the best life ever. What? I live in the palace. <laughs> I'd like to ask you now to reflect on the session that we've just done, the workshop, to evaluate it and identify what you really enjoyed and what you learnt from the session. Isisa, would you like to say? I really liked, liked the acting because it was fun. Because it was fun acting and it was fun to go into other people's shoes. I think reflection is an absolutely key part of this work, but it doesn't always have to be at the end of the lesson. I think. There's a feeling that you've got to, you've done something, now you've got to talk about it. If you were to reflect on that, on that workshop, what do you think you learnt? Um, lots of things about acting. Can you give me an example? When I was the grass, when I was on the floor. If it's possible to build in moments of reflection throughout the drama, that to me is um, tremendously effective. I like the workshop because when when I was talking when I was talking about the, the trees yeah the trees that the children are not gonna climb on it anymore that if they climb on it anymore I'm gonna go take them to their parents and tell them that they should not bring them to the park for a whole day. Okay. So tomorrow. So going into role <coughs> helps you to create that character and that story. Yeah. Fantastic. I think the delight that can come when you have genuinely, with the kids, co-created uh, a piece of work that is creative, that has some meaning, that has been exploratory, that has wound up where, somewhere where neither you nor the children knew it would go, where all of you are equally <laughs> surprised and pleased by the direction the work has gone in, then I think that's a wonderful feeling. Ooh. Mm -hmm.